All right, I am here with Mr. Jeff Foxworthy, and I cannot tell you how excited I have been to have you in studio because one, I'm from Georgia, and two, I grew up um, listening to your redneck jokes, and all my neighbors were rednecks. <laughs> Oh, you probably were guilty of a few of them. I think that's everybody was guilty of some. I gotta tell you some of my favorites. Okay. Okay. You might be a redneck if you think a subdivision is a math problem. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You think the French Riviera is a foreign car. And you have more than three shirts with cut off sleeves. Larry the Cable Guy. Larry Larry inspired quite a few of those jokes. He was, he, it's like Bill said, he said, you did redneck jokes forever, and then you brought Larry on the Blue Collar Tour, and they all came to life. Exactly, exactly. I was going to ask you, so you pulled those mostly from, like, friends, family members. I'm sure you've got some oh, relatives, yeah. too. Oh, yeah, it's like, you know, people say, where do you come up with that? I'm like, there's no research going on. <laughs> These are my family and friends. And, and, and I kind of found through the years the ones that worked the best were the true ones. Like, if you're working television, sits on top of your non-working television. That was my <laughs> grandparents. They had this big console and it died. They go buy another TV and they put it on the console. I'm like, get it. rid of the one that's not working. For you know, it's useless. It's yeah, not going to work. It's not coming end. back. Well, my granddad's like, that's good wood. <laughs> yeah, what Can't a, go to waste. No. It's not happening. Now, um, I want to read this correctly. You are the largest selling comedy recording artist in history. Well, that's a little weird. That yeah. is crazy. Yeah. That's amazing. When did you decide you wanted to become a comedian? You know what? I think I always wanted to be a comedian, but when I, because when I was a kid, I would save my allowance and buy, like comedy album, Bill Cosby and Flip Wilson and Bob Newhart, and I'd memorize them and I'd go to school and do. I was always getting in trouble so for making class people, clown. making people laugh. And <laughs> the best note I ever got backstage the first time I played the Fox Theater in Atlanta. So I brought a note to the dressing room, and it was from my high school principal, and it said, "I cannot believe I am actually shelling out money." to listen to the same kind of junk I used to try to put a stop to. <laughs> that you used to go to detention Oh, yeah, I was in his office with him going, what do you think you are, a comedian? And I'm like, apparently You're so, like, Mr. Gibbons, it's on the sign. <laughs> but but I didn't know you could do it. I had a real job. I worked at IBM, and I was the guy at IBM doing impersonations of the boss in the break room oh, and getting so called. And, and a bunch of guys I worked with entered me in a, in a contest for working comedians. Okay. And I'd never been on stage. I'm like, I'm not a working comic. and. And I won the contest. That's unbelievable. I had no idea what I, and I knew a minute into it, I was like, this is what I want to do. And so I quit my job. My, my parents thought I'd oh lost my Oh my gosh, mind. I'm sure everyone did. My mother's like, are you on dope? <laughs> are you on dope? What's wrong with you? Are you smoking that Mary Jane? <laughs> and, yeah, and then, you know, five years later, I was on Johnny Carson and the same mom is going, you know, you wasted all those years at IBM. And <laughs> right, whatever. singing a different tune. Yeah, right, yeah. She was flopping like a bass on the kitchen floor when I quit that job. Now, you're hosting a, a, another show, mm -hmm. uh, third season. Congratulations. Wow, I had a lot American, of shows that didn't go three seasons, so we're happy about that. American Bible Challenge, yeah. so congrats. That's very yeah. exciting. Yeah. That's awesome. It's, uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of weird because after fifth grader, when GSN contacted me they said you know how would you feel about doing a show kind of like fifth grader but about the bible and i'm like can you do a game show about right? the bible I'm, I'm, i didn't want to be in line in hell going it was the game show right that's why i'm down here <laughs> but you know the cool thing about it I, I mean and i really went away and kind of thought about it because unlike any show the, the people that win, they don't keep the money. They turn around and they love on somebody in their community. What's great too is, I mean, there's so much, it's educational, but it's so funny. Well, you know, it's very lighthearted also. I thought, you know, I told my wife when I agreed to do it, I said, I might catch some grief for this. Mm -hmm. Not from like the secular, but, mm -hmm. but from the faith world. If right. somebody's gonna go, hey, you can't be making jokes and you can't right, be laughing right. and you can't. Bible's a serious thing. Yeah. yeah, but well, and I think the lessons are, are, are as relevant now as when it was written, whether it's talking about your money or your, you know, your spouse or whatever, but I, I also believe God breathed his attributes into us, and one of those is humor. I mean, I know as a dad, when my kids are laughing, that thrills me of to death. Of course, of course. And so I think, you know, as long as you're respectful with the thing, you can have fun with it. And and, and, act, and I'm kind of surprised nobody's, nobody's, we haven't had any complaints. Yeah, no, because it's an amazing yeah. show. It's yeah. great. Now, you said that you film uh, American Bible Challenge in what, five days? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we film like 10 episodes a season, so we knock it out. That's unreal. Time. And you're in just different locations or you're in one location? Yeah, the we whole usually time? do it all in one. I, I fly out to LA and we do it out here, but our teams come from all over the country, so. Yeah, but you, uh, you're you familiar with LA, right? I lived out here for eight years, yeah. But, I, but, but all my family's in Georgia, so when my kids were little, when. Uh, 
when NBC invited us not to come, come back for the fall season during the sitcom years, I was like, eh, I'm gonna go raise my kids. And now how old are your girls? God, they're getting old now. They're in college, oh, 20, 20 no. and 22, so. So the dating and the, oh. all that. You know what, that's God, I think, God does that to, to guys that used to think they were players That's back exactly in the day. That's exactly what it was, is he gives 100%. You, is he gives you daughters, and he's like, this is not so funny now, He's is like, it? Oh, now you're not laughing. No, it's not funny now. Cause, and it, because when I was like in high school, I could get every girl's mom to like me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every girl's mom loved me, and their dads would look at you <laughs> like you had peed in their coffee cup. And, and now having daughters, I, you it, get it. I get, totally get it. You get it. Now, are you hard on them? Like, are you, do you do like the redneck thing with the rifle when they walk? In or are you kind of just like you know what I kind of went a different approach I put these tombstones in the flower beds outside the door <laughs> with different guys names on them and okay. then when they come to the door I go see that that's the guy that tried to touch your sweater last week yeah he's, he's in the flower bed so now. hands to yourself yeah hands to yourself yeah yeah so now when you're in LA what do you what do you do out here on your off time uh yeah well, yeah, well I have a lot of friends I'm like I said we lived out here for for eight years and uh, and and so usually it's just kind of catching up with old friends my buddy Bill Ingwell lives out mm -hmm. here yeah you're so. very close to him yeah, yeah, well, all that. the guys on the on the blue collar tour, which is probably why that thing worked, was we really were friends. We really got, I mean, we would laugh every day. Go, can you believe they're paying us to do this? Now, who's the craziest one on, on the tour? Oh, Ron, not even close. <laughs> Ron, Ron was probably the funniest out of all of right. us. Just naturally funny. He could he could recap his day, and we would be Rolling. like beating the table, laughing, going, "You've got to talk about that on stage." Well, I'm so glad that you stopped by. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you for having and me. And you are welcome here anytime. And I love what you've done with the place. It looks great. Thank you. I did it all myself. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>